Roblox houses over 196 million different users. These include players, developers, YouTubers, freaks, and more. Among these users are a few notorious and despised characters that have left a negative image of themselves within the Roblox community. This could be because of toxic behavior, exploiting, hacking, or even making threats. Today I want to go over the most widely hated Roblox users and see what led them to have such a notorious reputation. Before getting started though, I want to make it clear that this list doesn't include people like Dr. Rofat or Mr. Obvious. Even though they're obviously hated by the whole community for their inexcusable actions, I characterize them as being more of Roblox degenerates and for my sanity, don't want to get into that in this video. Anyway, let's start off with the self-proclaimed world's most hated Roblox player, Jared Valdez. Jared created his first account on April 1st, 2008 under the username Jared Valdez 2 This account wasn't the pinnacle of his controversy, but he was still highly disliked by the community due to his habit of copying games and groups and repurposing them. Jared actually has a YouTube channel literally titled Jared Valdez, World's Most Hated Roblox Player, where he shared a lot of details about his past on Roblox. On his channel, there's a video titled Jared Valdez and the Truth About Roblox, which provides a lot of information about his progressive infamy. Now, Jared would allegedly use exploits to gain unauthorized access to popular Roblox games and would republish them with minimal changes. I say allegedly because Jared actually hasn't admitted to doing this and instead has said that the games he's repurposed were actually already uncopylocked. Uncopylocked, for those who don't know, means that the creator grants permission for anyone to download a copy of their place. Before 2018, place stealing exploits were pretty common since Roblox didn't have strict measures in place to combat against them. I have a video going over the progressive rise and decline of Roblox exploits, but if you don't want to watch it, just know that exploits were very common in Roblox early years and allowed many people to steal places and do whatever they wanted with them. Some people would even republish a popular game and uncopy lock them without the original owner's permission for anyone to download. So maybe Jared is telling the truth and he only used games that were already uncopy locked or maybe he's lying and actually used the exploit himself. Either way, this republication of already existing Roblox games would heavily contribute to his infamy. The popularity for his first account is mainly attributed to the many role-playing games he would republish. One of these games being Welcome to Hollywood. These RP games were filled with online daters and along with this, he would also constantly change the thumbnail and title for his places as clickbait. Jared wasn't just copying games though. He would also blatantly copy famous groups and just like his copied games, make very minimal changes to them. One of these groups was named Studio Jer, which is an obvious twist on a group named Studio R by R92. For some reason, it seems like the British have colonized Studio Jer, so maybe they're enjoying some tea and crumpets are there, okay? We don't know. Another copied group was Team Vortex, which is a ripoff of Vortex Security by Chibi Toby. According to the Roblox wiki, Jared actually offered 2 to 3 million tickets to buy the group off Chibi Toby, but once he declined, Jared made his own copy. Not only that, but he also copied their group icon and uniforms. Jared's first account would eventually be banned because he would buy Builders Club with his mom's credit card when he was 12 and she disputed the charge. Yeah, this, um, this isn't a joke. After my account, Jared Valdez 2 got terminated for buying BC with my mom's credit card that I stole from her. This was when I was 12. <laughs> she, did, she then disputed the purchase with her bank and my account got terminated, deleted. This would lead him to create numerous videos cursing at Roblox and their admins, which he has since apologized for. So Jared had already created a pretty bad reputation for himself at just 12 years old. His constant stealing of groups and games, clickbait, and toxic attitude caused the Roblox community to extremely dislike him. Here's some forum posts from the time to show the community's perspective of him. Who was Jared Valdez too? Wasn't he a really famous guy? Did he get deleted or something? He was a perverted new also, he was a hypocrite. He had some really newbie places that were up at the time he got banned. Anyone know why he got banned? Surprisingly, the Roblox moderator Stickmaster Luke is here, but I think this is before he became an official Roblox admin. Here's another post by Jared himself titled, Jared Valdez 2 is back on March 3rd, 2011, with the replies, Oh God, burn it, burn it, burn it with fire. So yeah, people really didn't like him. After this, Jared would make another account on July 6th, 2008, named Jared 
Jared Valdez 4, which is the one most people are familiar with. He re-uploaded many of the games as his other accounts and a few more. A list of many of his copied games is provided on the Roblox wiki. Jared would do the same things on this account and would continue to garner more and more hatred from the community. His most famous stolen games were Daxter 33's Paintball and Stealth Pilot's The Undead Coming. This account would also be deleted soon due to Jared buying and selling Roblox hats for actual real life currency, which is against Roblox's TOS. Of course, Jared would make another account named Jared 2 Valdez 4 and of course, he would do the same things as before. Around this time, Jared supposedly received a one day long ban with the following message attached. Jared, you need to stop stealing places and threatening to steal places. We do not want Roblox to be a place of stealing and threats, so stop being a part of that trend. If you continue to steal and threaten, we will have to delete this account, all your alts, and all future accounts you make. Consider this. This image is provided by the Roblox wiki, so maybe it's real, maybe it's not. I assume it is real, and if it is, I've never actually seen a Roblox ban message be this specific or direct. This does signify how infamous Jared was, because even Roblox was aware of who this was. Now, during this time, Jared had a great idea to create a website called Faceblocks, which was a combination of Roblox and Facebook. The website was first named Roblox Uplift in 2009, but would soon change to Faceblocks in December 2012. Some features of the website included unmoderated chats with others, creating groups, and uploading media. Here's an old screenshot of how the homepage used to look like, and we can see that there's a lot of similarities to both Roblox and Facebook. The website would soon shut down in June of 2014, as Roblox would send Jared a cease and desist to remove everything that references Roblox off the site. He seemingly didn't remove everything associated with Roblox, so this would lead Roblox to entirely wipe Jared's account, Jared to Valdez 4, and Jared would also shut the website down himself due to having trouble with the hosting. The Faceblocks.com domain is now officially owned by Roblox, but a group of people are trying to recreate the website once more under the domain Faceblocks.net. So far, the site is trying to raise funds and support, so we'll see if it goes anywhere. As for Jared, he would make various other accounts after this, which would all be subsequently banned. Jared is also accused of gaining unauthorized access to other people's accounts. He allegedly hacked into BMJ44's account, which was later banned. For all the fetuses out there, BMJ44 MJ44 made a pretty popular game called Nintendo Minigames, which currently sits at 8.5 plus million visits. The game has since been deleted due to copyright, but was huge back in the day. BMJ44's account was compromised and banned on August 25th, 2012, and many people put the blame on Jared for this. However, this is all alleged, and there's actually no proof of this. Cosmo Nova 1 was another former Roblox developer whose account was compromised and terminated around 2013. Unlike BMJ44, this accusation accusation has some weight to it because Cosmo's avatar was changed to look exactly like Jared's account. His about section was changed to Hi, I'm JV. I don't know how my games get famous. I just sit there eating ice cream and potatoes all day. I think JV is meant to stand for Jared Valdez. The wiki page for Cosmo states with a lot of legitimacy that Jared was the one to compromise the account. The thing is, if it were actually Jared, why would he change his avatar to look exactly like this and why would he make fun of himself in the description? He's basically openly saying that he was the one to hack the account. My guess is that someone else hacked into the account and put the blame on Jared because like, what type of idiot would basically admit to compromising someone's account? Then again, Jared was um, pretty much an idiot at the time, so who knows. It was also speculated that Cosmo was actually an alt of Jared's, which was the reason for his termination, but this is just a baseless claim. Heroes was another user allegedly terminated due to Jared hacking into his account. Heroes was famous for games like Run and survive mom. Just like the previous two accounts I mentioned, it's speculated that Jared was the reason behind Heroes' eventual termination. It's reported that there was an argument between Heroes and an undisclosed friend, which led to his friend giving Heroes' password to Jared. This would supposedly lead Jared to change the description of Heroes' game, Run, to I thank Jared Valdez 4 for letting me use his game on April 15th, 2012, and 8 days later, replacing the game with a Roblox template game. There's been some updates from Heroes himself, according to the Roblox wiki, but there's no citations provided. According to the page, Heroes was actually terminated for charging back his lifetime OBC, which led 
allowed Roblox to delete all accounts associated with his IP address. It is also noted on the article that his relationship with Jared Valdez 4 could be described as friendly until he was terminated. Again, there's no reference for this, so take it with some skepticism. This doesn't rule out the possibility that Jared gained access to his account, just that his ban was unrelated to him. Jared wouldn't really come back after this, and he became an extremely infamous figure in the Roblox community. As I said before, Jared actually has a YouTube channel now where he shares a lot of information about his past on Roblox and his life. He also still uses the name Studio Jer to advertise his other endeavors as well. Overall, I think Jared, like many of us, was a dumb kid who did dumb things to reach the top of Roblox. Of course, he would become infamous for these things, but he kept on doing them because they kept generating more and more popularity. I can understand why people disliked him, because he was a toxic kid with a lot of toxic traits, but it seems like he's since changed. I can't say the same thing for Julius Coles though. Julius Coles created his account Julius5005 on February 26th, 2010, and Julius Coles V2 on March 28th, 2013. Similar to Jared, he gained a notorious reputation for repurposing uncopylocked games and models while claiming that he made them. His most famous game was Have a Family in the Town of Robloxia, which was an obvious copy of 1Dev2's Welcome to the Town of Robloxia. As we can see by the description of Julius's game, he claims that it was 100% made by him, which is an obvious lie. Julius would also constantly use clickbait for his games and change the title to attract players. Not only that, but he would also continuously re-upload his games if they went under review or if his account was banned. Julius would frequently be banned on the platform for creating explicit games, promoting hate speech, or some other dumb thing he would do. Roblox even poison banned him at one point, which means he was IP banned, but he would use a proxy to continue making accounts. If anything, the guy was persistent. One of the reasons for his account being banned was for publishing this video titled Quick Message. The video has since been deleted, but you can find re-uploads of it. I can't really explain what's going on, um, j just take a look. Before I start this video, I'm just going to say, Ooh. Eric Castle, Ooh. Cancer, Ooh. the whole Roblox administrator team, Ooh. the whole Roblox moderator team, Ooh. the whole support team, they all need to end up like Eric Castle, who died of cancer, and which is their co-founder. Their HQ needs to get Ooh. and destroyed, Ooh. and all their heads need to get Ooh. off. So thanks for watching, I'll see you in my next video. So yeah, this guy's uh, pr pretty crazy, okay? Pretty crazy. Now, a lot of people compare Jared to Julius, which is valid, since they both stole places, used clickbait, were toxic, and would do dumb stuff to get their accounts banned. But the main differentiation that makes Julius so hated to this day is because of the videos he would publish on his YouTube account, Julius Cole. Like the video I showed before, most of them would address haters, complain about Roblox, make threats, and honestly just rant about random stuff. In one of his videos, he would claim that 1Dev2 actually stole his game and that he was the original creator of Welcome to the Town of Robloxia. In another, he was ranting about his account getting deleted. But the videos that led him to be so widely hated is for the threats he would make against Roblox and their staff. He would specifically make a lot of rude comments against Roblox's co-founder, Eric Castle, who passed away from cancer on February 11th, 2013. Now, some people think he played a character and was just trolling, while others thought he was actually messed up in the head. To me, he was obviously being an edgy troll, but of course, that doesn't excuse the videos he would make. They're messed up, and making threats while also disrespecting someone's death is totally wrong. Julius would also fight with a lot of Roblox YouTubers around 2016 to 2018 about, um, honestly, I don't really know what's going on here. His channel was primarily associated with these hate videos, but sometimes he would switch up, okay, he would be a nice guy, and, um, he would ask Roblox for forgiveness. He would have a change of heart, until, like, a day later, he would go back to criticizing them. The name Julius Cole has since been blacklisted by Roblox, and saying it just filters the message. As for Julius, it seems like he's stopped making these constant Roblox hate videos, and instead just makes videos playing Roblox or talking about other Roblox YouTubers. It also seems like there's an ongoing feud against him and Jared Valdez, which is um pretty ironic. Unlike Jared, I can't really be sympathetic to Julius. Yeah, he's pretty similar to Jared, as they would both exhibit toxic habits on Roblox, but it's the stuff he would do off-platform that I can't excuse. He was obviously trying to be an edgy troll, but making death threats, disrespecting someone's death, and targeting employees isn't something I can look over. All these things cultivated in Julius being the most notorious Roblox player. Unlike Jared or anyone else on this list, Julius doesn't seem to be changing and hasn't reflected on his past actions at all. Moving on, we have Alex Valentino Crown. Alex Valentino Crown, also known as Alex Crown or Alex007, and currently known as Roblox user 24118 due to 
to a Roblox support system exploit was a notorious Roblox scammer and account hacker. His account wasn't actually his and was originally owned by someone named Ape911 who was a winner of Mike D's paintball tournament in 2007 and someone often referenced by Jared Valdez. Going to the Roblox forum archive, we can see many posts made in 2007 by Ape911 regarding the tournament. Alex would soon gain unauthorized access to the account around 2016 and would continue using it as his own. Alex owned numerous rare hats under this account, such as the Boss White Hat, Doombringer's Doombringer, and the Lord of the Federation. The thing I find strange is that his Roblox wiki page notes how he would report bugs to Roblox and, because of it, owned many of these rare hats. Some of these include the Boss White Hat and Doombringer's Doombringer, which I just mentioned, but he also obtained the Cleus App Phyton in October of 2017. Maybe this is true and he was awarded the hats, but I'm a bit skeptical that someone who would constantly steal other people's accounts and do other malicious things would work alongside Roblox. I'm not saying it wasn't possible, maybe it is, uh, but I just find it hard to believe. I'm not sure how else he would get these hats though, so maybe he would help Roblox in identifying bugs with the intention of getting these rare hats. Alex gained infamy because of compromising other accounts, selling accounts for real life currency, and trading poisoned items. For those who don't know, poisoned items are things obtained through illicit means. When you trade a poisoned item or own one, you're likely to receive a ban because Roblox suspects the original owner and the person receiving the item are both mules. When I say mule, I don't mean a literal animal, okay? I mean like a pawn. This can also happen if the trade is suspiciously unfair. Alex would repeatedly do this and also owned many alt accounts in order to compromise other users to sell their items for real life currency. This in itself gave Alex a pretty bad reputation on Roblox, but the reason most people are aware of him and dislike him is due to him compromising the accounts of Linkman 99. Linkman 99 is a pretty well-known YouTuber and fell for a link scam by Alex in early 2016. There's an article by Devin posted on February 7th, 2016 on a website called Medium that goes over the incident in pretty good detail. As I said before, Alex had multiple accounts and one of these was named Alex Crowns. Devin explains that Alex would pay $2,500 to get the Dominus Frigidus hat. What are these names, dude? After a while, Roblox would find out and ban his Alex Crowns account. Keep in mind that Alex Valentino Crown wasn't banned, only this alt account was. Angered by this, Alex would send Linkman a phishing link with the web address rcblocks.com. Since it looks similar to roblox.com, Linkman stupidly entered his login information and would be redirected to the actual Roblox website. This is a common thing in phishing attacks where they make the link look similar to the actual one, make you enter in your details, and redirect you to the actual website they're imitating to make it seem like you successfully logged in, even though in reality you just gave the attacker your info. Around January 13th, 2016, Alex would use Linkman's account to trade and sell everything away. He would trade the items not only to mess with Linkman, but to also ban the users accepting the trades since they're accepting poison items, which will cause Roblox to ban their accounts. Among these banned users were Contents Cool and Vorfi, both users holding millions of Robux worth of value. Surprisingly, both of these users were clickbait developers who used the bait and switch method Jared and Julius were known for. Linkman would regain access to his account, but Alex wasn't done. Alex would actually regain access to Linkman's account by using the login through Facebook feature on Roblox. The article states, Roblox has a login form from Facebook option that allows you to use a Facebook account and use it as a source to log into your Roblox account. The real problem with this alternative is that there is no way to remove the Facebook account's bond with the Roblox account via the Roblox website. I'm not sure if this means that Alex added his own Facebook details to Linkman's account or if he knew Linkman's Facebook details. Either way, he was able to compromise his account once more. He once again did the exact same thing and got more players terminated. Linkman would get his account back a second time and would make a video titled I lost 75 million Robux, how I got hacked and how not to. Linkman 99's guide to Roblox riches number 4, addressing the situation and how he fell for it. It honestly sucks that the victims of these poisoned item attacks don't get their accounts back. If you randomly receive an insane trade request that's in your favor, you're naturally gonna accept the offer especially if you're unaware of what poisoned items are. Linkman was thankfully able to get his account back. As for Alex, the original Alex Valentino Crown account was terminated on August 16th, 2018 for repeatedly violating Roblox's TOS. He would continue making alt accounts, but all of them would be subsequently banned due to him trading poisoned items or other reasons. On February 15th, 
2024, Alex's account was unterminated for 20 minutes due to the aforementioned Roblox support system exploit, which had also changed his username to Roblox user 24118. The way this exploit works is that someone would convince Roblox support that someone's username is inappropriate, which would cause it to be reset. Along with Alex's username being reset, his account was somehow unterminated. Hearing the news, Alex would log back into his account, but decided not to transfer any of his items so that Roblox wouldn't be alerted by their mistake. Sadly for Alex, the mistake was corrected by Roblox a few minutes later, and his account was banned once again, and is still banned to this day. In the end, Alex is a widely criticized user, and his rise to infamy was primarily caused by his actions against Linkman99. At this point, it seems like Alex has left the platform, but he might have some alt accounts that are unnoticed. Unlike Alex and everyone else I've went through, there is a controversial Roblox user who is still around to this day and has gradually changed his reputation for the better. Sonic the Hedgehog XX is a developer who joined on September 23rd, 2008. He primarily became famous for his game Live in a 5 Star Resort. Similar to most of the people I covered on this list, Sonic was controversial because his games heavily including free models and for supposedly copying games. The game I mentioned before, Live in a 5 Star Resort, is alleged to be a copy of Weirdo King's original 5 Star Resort. From what I can gather, Sonic hasn't admitted to this and has instead said that he was heavily influenced by Weirdo King to create his place. Going to the Roblox forum archive, there's tons of posts talking about Sonic stealing Weirdo King's game. Here's a post from May 18th, 2010, stating, Weirdo King made it. He was the original maker of it. He spent hours making it for some stupid kid to mess it up with free models. Weirdo King should have a lot more credit, yet he's being flamed for it. People who make original version should get more respect. The replies to this post actually reveal that Weirdo King made his place uncopy locked, and if that's the case, I don't think Sonic is really at fault here. Once you uncopy lock your game, anyone is free to use it any way they want. Yeah, it would have been nice if Sonic gave credit to Weirdo King, but he isn't obligated to do so. To be honest, most people were mad at him because his game was popular even though he put minimal effort. Sonic's resort game was also criticized for basically just using free models and for having online daters. Another situation mentioned by the wiki is that Sonic would take an uncopy locked game and would also use an exploit in Sharp TH's Life in Bikini Bottom game to steal the XML source which he would then use in his own game. Another common criticism against Sonic was for his group Fear. The controversy revolved around the group being useless and the reason behind its high member count being because of alt accounts. All these things cultivated in Sonic being generally hated by the community and being compared to Jared Valdez. Some forum posts from the time highlight this comparison, like this one stating, it's the rebellion against Jared Valdez 2 all over again, except this time it's all against that one guy named Sonic the Hedgehog XX. Or this one, anyone remember Jared Valdez 2? He was the Sonic the Hedgehog XX of 2008 to 2009. I possibly got the dates wrong, but anyway, he made free modeled and copied places, and he was hated to nearly committing, um, IRL game over. Over a game? I mean, come on now. Okay, okay, wait. Jared was, a uh, rope maxing? Uh, based? The hatred for Sonic in the Roblox community was basically identical to Jared's, in that both would copy games, use free models, and use their minimal efforts to reach the front page. Unlike Jared though, Sonic was generally able to rectify his perception within the community. Sonic's main crime was repurposing existing games and taking ownership of them as his own. He didn't really indulge in any of the other toxic habits Jared would. Yeah, people didn't like his game and were upset that he reached popularity without any effort, but he didn't inherently go against Roblox's TOS, so he was actually able to keep his account to this day. He would later take accountability of using free models and even though he didn't admit to all the claims, he moved on and created original work like Sunset City. So Sonic is pretty respected as far as I know and I'm pretty sure most people have moved on from the things he did when he was a kid. Unlike everyone else, Sonic was the only one to properly bounce back and recover from his negative perception. But yeah, those were some of the most hated and controversial users of Roblox. It's very interesting to see the different types of players Roblox houses and to remember those players who are remembered for all the wrong reasons. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. Subscribe, follow my Instagram at Bling McQueen, and take care.